Well, it's a hard life being a wood carver. This project that we're doing here is not really about making a beer tote. Um, I've made the beer tote because it's a very common and useful thing to, to give somebody or to make. Um, but it's all about raised lettering. So on, the, on this tote, you've got a couple of places, but you can really do some nice raised lettering. For example, I've got one here on the front bar. That says cheers. And on the other side here, but totally different sort of lettering. Um, actually more of an optical illusion than anything else. And at the end here, I've been able to put a little bit of carving. This star is actually the one of the logos of my favorite beer. So that's, that's there, but you can put anything you like there. So the project itself is fairly straightforward. Um, there's woodworkers among you who would like to do dovetail joints and such, but all this is actually screwed together with the nail holes covered. So it's just lengths of wood, a little bit of shaping here, cut to size, screwed together. So it's a fairly straightforward woodworking project. I'll put the plans for it. And for an American version, that is a little, because the American bottles are a little bit different size in the download. So all the details will be in there. Now the thing about raised lettering is that um, there are many different fonts, different alphabets that you can use over and above um, in size lettering, in size lettering where you cut into the wood, usually means um, a, a font that is very particular in the way it carves. Some uh, in size lettering, it carves very well, very quickly. And when it gets into complicated fonts like this, um, where you've got round bits, it's actually quite difficult. It's quite picky and it doesn't satisfy very much. But when you're doing raised lettering, um, you can have any shape you like. It doesn't actually have to be a letter. It could be a leaf, it could be anything, because the setting in of the letter is the same as what we would do as wood carvers for um, uh, any low relief carving. So if you've never done lettering before, and, but you can do a low relief carving up to the point of setting it in before modeling, you can do low relief carved letters. It's all yours. So like a free gift for every wood carver. Anyway, I've got two sorts of lettering here. I've got this one very open, um, sort of um, a marker pen it's called. And on the other side, this one, totally different technique. Um, but it's interesting to play with the optical illusion here a little bit. So those are the, the letters. And I, although I've put a star here, of course you're you know, free to put any other logo, whatever you like on there. And on this side, I've put a little tring opener, but you could make another carving on this side. Entirely up to you. Anyway, so that's, that's our project. Um, looking forward to getting on with it. And um, the first thing we can do is to start off looking at the, the way this is constructed. In other, in other words, what are the parts that you're going to need to carve? The whole thing is put together with screws. And if I take these apart, you can see what we've got. The handle is here. And interestingly, all these parts here that go in this direction are all the same length. So let's take those screws out. We've got the two side pieces here. And these are the bits we're going to carve the letters on. So there's one and two, and I've got these marked so I know which goes where. So there's the two sides. Then there's an end. And this is where you can see all the screws that will go in there. And this is also where we can carve. So we've got three items of carving, two sides and ends. So here's the end here. Two of those. And then this bit here is just a very loose infill. Again, these will be all in the plans. And then we've got our base itself. The one thing I would say um, that's quite nice is that you could leave these uh, just with screws. You could have really nice screws in here. But what I'm doing is to um, use what's called a, a plug cutter. And it produces, it's a little, I'll just put that there, you can see that. This little cutter here produces a tiny little plug like that, which will fit into this hole and cover that. So I can cover these screw holes if I don't want them. So that's something I'm going to do. Uh, that's up to you. Use a, a force and a bit that's exactly the size and matches this plug cutter. 
But again, I put a note about this in the download. So there you go, it's fairly simple, it's screwed together and we have two ends and for the carving at the ends if you want them and two sides for the lettering. So let's uh, have a look at the lettering now. I'm going to use my 60 degree V-tool to line in, in other words I'm going to go around all the letters as best I can inside the waist, so I'm in the waist wood here, and uh, outline them. So I'm going to start here. Now that's quite hard wood here, so going across, so I'm going to just use my map. Now the depth I want here is just above my finished surface. When I look at this uh, wood here, I'm going to go along there now, the grain is going in this direction. That means that, that if I go in this direction, I'm going to tear up the wood. I'm going to go against the grain on the good side. So I'm going to make sure that I go Whatever direction I do is I'm going to go with the grain on the, on the bit I want to keep. So I'm going to go along here. And you can see that it's slightly tearing on the other side, but... And at some point it's very close to the letter, so I've got to be wary of that. So I'll go along all the outside and then I'm going to start going around the letters themselves. Now there's going to be some parts like in here that are quite difficult to do anything about but I'll just move my cut into there. When I come to junctions like that, I'm just going to do my best. Now on this side, I'm coming in this direction. A bit lighter here where it's cut into the uh, into the top of the arm. What's going to happen is that bit here is not going to be as deep as there because this wall, all the walls are going to be slightly sloping. This wall here and this wall here are going to meet at a further up from the background than say this wall here which will go right down to the background. So just be aware of that. When you come to these tight little areas just back off The next step that I call lowering is to remove this waste around the letters or whatever the element is down to just above the background which is where I place the uh, bottom of the V. So I'm using a deep gouge um, and the width of the gouge will depend really on the amount of wood you want to remove. In this case again it's quite narrow so I might even go down to something as narrow as that. This is um, a number 10, so it's a little bit more U-shaped. This is a number 9, so it's a semicircle. Whatever, you, you're going to go across the grain, as opposed to this way, along the grain. Go across the grain as much as you can, and start removing this wood here. Now, I'm not using the mallet, I'm just, but I am twisting it like this. When I come to the end here, I don't want to bump into the into the wall. So again, I'm rotating. This is called rocking through the cut. <coughs> excuse me, and I'm just easing it through there a little bit, like that. So I'm just above. That will be now my final surface. So work probably this this way, and I'll turn it around and work that way. So wherever I can. 
I think I will use my ballad here. The nice thing about a mallet is that when you hit it, it only goes far, uh, uh, so far, so it's quite easy just to tap it home. This is very hard wood. So, get my brush. So wherever I can, I'm going to remove this wood. A little bit here, a little bit there, down here. The important thing is not to run into the walls. Here we are at the end of the lowering stage. Looks a bit of a mess, but there's certain things that are important to point out. I'm going across the grain, which means that I don't have to worry about whether I'm going with the grain or against the grain. So I'm going across the wood fibres and the, the, the wood just falls away, crumbles away. That's a good way of working at this stage. The depth where I've been able to show it, like here, 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 and here, these are all um, the same depth. So it's as if I'm trying to see through across from this depth here to the background there. I'm just doing that by eye. Where I, where I can, I've, I've done a bigger area. Where I can't, I've just you know, used my tools to open it up a little bit. That's all I can do at this stage. So it will vary according to your letters. But that's the end of this stage where we've get a, got away most of the waste wood and we're down more or less to where we want to be. So the next stage will be just to clean this up a little bit. What I'm going to do now is level off whatever area I can. And in this case, it's not a lot. I'm going to take a flat gouge and just say like this area here, just slice it across like so. And I'll turn it round uh, perhaps in a minute and, and slice this way. So this edge here, this surface rather here, that is now a finished surface. And I'm going to go where I can along the carving and match this depth with this depth with say this depth over here and here and here and that now will be a guideline to everything else I do. Now in this case it's all very tight so there's not a lot to do in this uh, leveling but it might be in your letters or if you've got a bigger area around here or a different shape you've got a, quite a bit to do. Don't worry about leaving uh, tearing up like this, any crud in the corners. That will be dealt with in our next stage where we're setting in and actually levelling off to a, to a finish all over. So this is now a finished surface. This is round here. Yeah, as you can see, there's not a lot I can get out of here. But I'll just say again, this is the bottom surface. This is the background. That's the depth we're going to. That's finished. I've got a little bit of a waste wood. You see, uh, there's a little white paper around there and a little bit to here to the edge. So I've got a little bit of waste there. And that's what we're going to do next is, is actually set in. And then we can finish this background up to there. This next stage is really the most exciting part because we're coming to a finish with the letters. It's setting in, in other words, setting in the actual outline of the letters, and clearing up to it, and uh, then the letters will be finished. So I'm going to start with the outline here and all the straight parts in the letters. So if you've been lettering, you probably have wider chisels, but I'm going to use a, a, a narrow one. A wider one will cover this length better, but if you're not really into lettering and just want to do a bit of this sort of high relief lettering, let's look at a, a slightly narrower chisel. So what we must do is if that's vertical, I'm going to drop this back about 10 degrees. Why? Well, because you want to pick up a little bit of the the wall, just a little bit, to reflect a little bit of light. That's far more interesting than if we come straight down and the letters 
you know, it's difficult to see how, how they're fixed to the background. The little wall shows them off nicely. So start off, um, I can put it right into that score mark, uh, about 10 degrees. And I've got to marry that into the next one. About the same before. And then I'm going to use my slightly narrower gown here. You can see it's coming off. So this, I'll take the background now up to there. And this now is the finished surface up to that edge. So a little bit of hair there, a little bit of, so take that off. A little stab mark is okay. You can stab into the wood, um, but lightly. So when we come to the corner here, I put in a little stop cut like that. Okay, and then I can start coming across here. So work my way along that score line here. Oops, get that in there. And it'd be the same on, on this one here. A little score line in there. That makes a sort of mitre corner. And then I can come along here. So I'm going to work my way all the way along and as best I can, like for example here, I'll have to come in this way, a little bit in this way. Take that wood out. So there's still crud left around here, but this is now finished up to this edge. All the way along. I'm trying to get that as even a background as possible. There's a bit, there's a, this fibre won't come out because it's attached around here. So I'm not too worried about that at that stage, but I will have a nice edge here set into this wall. Once I've been around the edge, and you can see how bits I haven't been able to clean up, but I've set in the line. I can turn to the bits in the middle that have straight elements, and exactly the same as if it was the edge, set those in. So coming to the edge of the drawing. Where it's a little bit narrower, like say here, I'll swap to a narrower chisel. And I'm avoiding all the bits that are not straight. So I'll go around there and just as before, I'll get my, my gouge and I'll clean up as best I can this, this bit of wood here, up to the up to the edge and in here. So this will now be a, a trench in between and this will be up to an edge. So this wall here and this wall should be as equal as possible. Don't worry if you're a little bit out, um, it is hand done, but try, try and get those walls. Should be the same height because we're at the same depth. I've done as much of these straights as I can uh, little bits in here I can't do, but I've chosen narrow chisels here and I've also done diagonal elements here. So where the straights are, I've come to a, a finished background and a corner. So try and clean this up as you go along, then you won't have to go back. The one thing I didn't say, which I think is worth saying, is that when you're working down on the, on the side grain like this, as opposed to across the grain, this way, you, you probably want to finish off with a bit of a slice in the direction of the grain because it tends to crumble and tear. So slice the tool a little bit to get a clean edge. But you won't be able to finish up in here because you can't get at it. And this is where the fun really begins because now we've got the curves to do and to get into these spaces. And one thing you probably would have noticed is that when you're trying to come in here, 
this wall here gets in the way. So we're going to start using some different tools uh, that are really very good for this job. I want to introduce this tool here. This is a short bent flat gouge and it comes in different sizes. So although it looks like a chisel, it's the same as a number three gouge but, but bent. When I say different sizes, I mean different widths. So for example, you can get all the tools that you would use as a straight number three in this curved form. And these would be great for getting in between uh, the various parts where you've got walls on either side. Additionally, the other tool which are going to be really useful is this one. This is again short bent, a sort of spoon shaped number three, but it's got a skew chisel and it comes as a left and right and you use that for getting into corners. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the, the slow curves to begin with, meaning the, the long uh, curves, biggest radius. Now this letter of style is very um, complicated in that there's no regular pattern. If you remember, um, a gouge is a part of a, a, a circle, an arc of a circle. But these, these shapes are quite complicated, especially the long ones. So what we're going to do is take something like a, a, a flat gouge, a number three, and set it on the line at that angle, and then nibble it along like this. So each cut is marrying the neck. So I haven't got any steps between. I'm going to come along here as far as I can. And at some point, I'm going to change for a different gouge. And the same at this end. So this is all the wall. When I'm finished here, what I can do is I can push that like that. I'm going to just score in the root of that letter. And then I can clean that up with my flat gouge. So that's the sort of way I'm going to deal with a long, um, uh, long curves. Now when it comes to a tighter curve like this, what, I'm, what I'd like to be able to do is pick a gouge that fits it. For example, this gouge is too tight, but perhaps this gouge here will fit that curve there. So when I have this tool, I can push that in there and follow it around like this. Okay, so that's following that round. That gives me that curve. And what would be good for is me to use that wherever I can find perhaps a shape that's that shape around the letter. So I might go around the whole uh, carving looking for shapes where that this curve will fit. For example, it will fit in here. So I've set in here like this, and before I carry on, I'm just going to pull out, um, if I can find it, back to this flat gouge, pull that down there like that. So I've got a, a set in line all the way around. That's, there's no, no steps. And then I'm going to have to get my bent gouges, and this is where they come into the round, into here. <sighs> to clean that up. And in here. Now, I can go so far into that corner there with this tool, and then I need to swap to one of these, like a little skew chisel, and push that in there like that. Now, whether or not I need the left or the right one depends on how the grain's going and everything, but that will come around here like this. And before I leave that, I want to make sure that's nicked off neatly. So make sure as we leave it, I've got a nice junction. I might also just push that down there, stab that in. saying now is we've come around here and this is now finished but keep checking it you know we'll change the light make sure that you know we've got this background nice and flat 
and that all these walls are the same height. So we'll do the long curves first and then we'll start merging them into um, these other tighter sweeps here. to fix, find a tool that will fit that shape better, this one. So I'm going to merge that around like this. bit here. So finding a tool that will come around that edge. Let's say this one will do it. And what's going to happen here is that the wall coming down in this direction, this way, and this cut going this direction are going to meet above the background because it's so close. So we're going to just let that be what it'll be. But I will stab this in a little bit more along here. And the same just there. So then back to the skews. You can hear how brittle this wood is. Let's have a look at some of this rather intricate inside uh, fields here. So I've come around the outside and um, I can take some of this off like so. This groove that I put in here with my VTOOL, what that does it allows the wood to fall away. So it's taken away some of the pressure. So when I set in here, for example, the wood will fall into that middle section. So it's quite a good idea to do that rather than just leaving that paper and un untouched. So, so pick it around there. Uh, okay, I can get to that with some of this to be with. Okay, so this bit in the middle, what I need to do is, is get a deep gouge like this. This is a number 11, but it could be a number 10. Set that in here. Pick up that edge with this cut round here. 
And one thing I can do is I can come in like this and I can cut down there. And what I'm going to try and do is stab into the background so that as I come in with my floor, my background, I'm actually able to come up to it. And on this side too, as I come round, everything at an angle still, I can come this way a little bit and pull that out. So what I'm left with is a little ridge down the middle, but the edges of the ridge are to the background. And then it's a matter of coming in with your, this is a very narrow one look, but I could probably get away, I'll just do it, get away with a, a straight gouge in here, around here, pull this bit out. And if I've severed the fibres down to the background, then that should should come out fairly readily. Then just check that edge. That's pretty good. Let's take that out. So let me do that again over here. So I'm going to sneak up on it by coming round the edge. So I've come round here, set in over there. setting it in here. Like that. Then again I've got a groove down the middle, something to take away some of the pressure. Um, pick a gouge, I think this one will probably do that one as well. So that in and you can see how the fibres are pulling over into that groove. Come round, join this up with, with that. So this is down to the background and on this side. And now this one's a little bit tight so I think I can go back to my number nine I used earlier on. That's coming down. So I've got a score right down to the background. Um, I could just take that off like that. So we've got this ridge down the middle and we follow through with our gouge. Clean that up. So the sense we're after, as I say, is for this background here to look as if it's running through, more or less, and to keep it fairly tidy as we go along. Let's get that right in there. And that's it, so I'm going to work my way around all the letters at a time, try to keep an eye on the background depth, There'll be this little scoring in the background there, cleaning up as I go along. And I'm going to gradually work all the way over these letters. And the wall, as I say, about 10 degrees, more or less 15 degrees is okay. So you get this little reflection of light. Here's the finished carving. If I was to critique it, I can see, you know, the background is a little bit deeper in parts, but overall it looks as if I have a flat background running through and the letters are placed on top. A little bit chewed up where it's been tricky to get in, but this is all, you know, this is all fine. The important thing I would say though is we have to look very carefully at two lines. This line here where the surface of the wood meets the top of the wall and then the bottom line where the wall, the bottom of the wall meets the background. So there are these two lines following around and those are what you really need to pay attention to. Make sure that your junctions, which might be a little bit stabbed, um, are tidy and that this edge is tidy. So one thing you could do is you could take a frosting tool and you can stipple the background. I'm not going to do that but I will put details of where else on the site we have frosting tools and using them uh, below this video. So all that remains for me to do is to remove this uh, paper. Now I used um, ordinary um, label paper, so I printed it out on a sticky label, which has actually proved good enough for me to just pick off. 
so I can just uh, work my way around and pick this off like this. So I'll pick off all the letters and then I will check this edge now with my tools to make sure that is tidy because the paper can sometimes confuse it. And then I'll put a sanding block over it with a fine paper, something like at least 180, 240. And I'll just clean this, clean off the lines and so on. Just clean that over. And then that'll be finished.